What's going on everyone? Welcome to Lords of the Fallen. So this game has a co-op system and according to what we thought, a seamless co-op system. But that's not exactly the case. Let's check out how you can join your friends as well as deal with invasions and find out if it's really worth your time. How do you join friends in the Lords of the Fallen? This game has an introduction area where you're taught the mechanics and it takes about five to 10 minutes to complete this, depending on how thorough you are with the reading. After that point, you'll reach your first vestige. These are the checkpoints in the game that give you the option to rest, warp to another location or upgrade. One last option is for the multiplayer. Select this if you're online and you can choose to beckon a company or slaughter a lamp bearer. Beckon a friend lets you instantly invite someone to your game, and once they accept, they'll spawn in directly next to you. You can only play with one person at a time, meaning co-op is limited to two people in total. This co-op assistant will look normal, be able to upgrade in your world, and never get kicked out after defeating bosses. So you can explore the world from start to finish without being forced to leave. However, this does not make it seamless co-op necessarily. The summoned player gets no loot throughout the world. He or she can collect the equivalent of souls from dead enemies to upgrade their stats, but they can't find new weapons and rings alongside you. They can purchase items from merchants, but that is about it. The summoned player also cannot transport you to the nether realm. This is the lantern mechanic that sees you make the world a bit darker and creepier. The second player can use the lantern to pull platforms, but not initiate the change itself. If you the main player die, you gain a free revive and change into the nether realm. The summoned player does not get this. You can revive a downed second player if you have a heal to do so, but the second player can never revive you, and if the main player dies, it's game over for both. So you get no limitations on your game, while the second player is there to collect what are essentially souls and help you defeat enemies. Also, the second player gets 30% less of those souls as well. Which begs the question, is this really seamless co-op? On the one hand, yes, you can explore the world without getting kicked out. Which was always the thing that sucked about playing Souls games as co-op. You had less heals when you were summoned and you couldn't actually complete the full game together. In Lords of the Fallen, you can indeed stay in your friend's world indefinitely, but you also don't want to. The best way to play this would be to clear an area and a boss in your friend's world. Then you both separate and he joins you. This way you would both upgrade together and get the good loot you need as the game gets harder. Unfortunately, if you do this, then you're just playing a Souls co-op system that's slightly less annoying. Yes, this is seamless co-op, but also it's not. Overall, I still think the co-op is gonna be worth your time. The joining for each world lets you upgrade more early on and fight every boss twice, which is actually fun. Completing each area a second time doesn't really take nearly as long since you know what you're doing and you can better find items if you miss them the first go around. Seamless co-op definitely is not a good way to market this game. It's not very truthful, but it's much better being able to play the game until you can't go without upgrades anymore. Switching when you want to rather than being forced to. As for invasions, they're basically the same as in Souls games. You can be invaded anytime, although some areas prevent it likely due to being more puzzly. Invasions will usually be near your level, making them more fair, but still kind of sucky. Invasions are pretty awful for the 90% of us playing these games, so play offline if you're solo to avoid the mechanic altogether. If you're in co-op, it's hard to tell yet. Me and my brother played for about 8 hours and never got invaded once, then started up a new character and got invaded in the first 10 minutes. It feels like invasions will be easier to deal with early on, but there's no telling in the later game. If invaders bait you into enemies or have a weird weapon you can't deal with, you could be in for it. There is a password system to set up that lets you join a friend faster. You don't really need this, but it can help. And unfortunately, this doesn't seem to stop invasions, which you can tell just from reading the description. Which ultimately means it's 50-50. Invasions could be bad for you, or they could not be. I don't see them being an issue in this game nearly as much as they were in Souls, just because in the Souls games it's too easy to gain some stupid OP advantage as an invader, from a cheap weapon, simple parrying, or backstabs. And since Lord of the Fallen doesn't have backstabs as easily accessible, it will be harder to get killed in a stupid unbalanced way. Regardless of anything I've told you, is Lords of the Fallen co-op worth your time? I would say for anyone who loves Souls and Souls likes, yes, absolutely. It's incredible being able to solve puzzles with your buddy and fight massive monsters. Makes the game feel more balanced actually, as they can throw a lot at you at times. And the classes work into this as well. For a while, I actually roleplayed as a paladin with a sigil that healed me and my team, as I did holy damage with a mace. 
There's a lot of potential here to have a great time, and me and my brother definitely had a blast. On the flip side, this is probably not for you if you prefer games to have standard co-op. Doing areas over is not a big deal for Souls co-op enjoyers. It's actually kind of fun. But traditional co-op, which I would consider seamless, is not a thing here. Ultimately, I am enjoying Lords of the Fallen so far, and I must admit, not needing items to summon my buddy is a good change of pace. If you learned something from this video, a like down below would be awesome. Other than that, I wish you the best of luck in this new adventure, and I'll catch you next time.